So, let's talk about the sabbatical that I am getting ready to venture off on. 2020, I'm going to take a sabbatical. For I don't know how long. We're going to start with three months. But I really want to do it the whole month, the whole year 2020. You know what? As I look on a lot of people, you know, what's it called? The uh, Family Medical Leave Act, FMLA. I ain't got my due justice. I am overdue. I ain't have no babies. I don't need no maternity time, none of that. I need some. Guess what? Y'all ain't got to pay me time. You just take a break. Keep my life on a um, different path. Shit, I need to travel. I'm ready to go see the world. I done been working all my life, so guess what? I think I could spend a little money and um, I could take some time off of work. But in actuality, I'm probably going to be making money while I'm taking that time off work, freelancing. Excuse me, I was thirsty. Yep, freelancing, so we'll see. But I'm taking the time off. I'm like, people get time off for uh, all those types of stuff. I am a little crazy, and I do have some um, crazy in me, but I need at least that allotted time to start. If it can't just be a voluntary, yep, you can take a sabbatical. You can take this many months off. Cool. That'll be fantastic. So, I say that to say this. I am reaching out to all of those who know me, who don't know me, who believe in me, who want to believe in me, uh, and believe in my brand to sponsor Hey, I'll wear your shirts, I'll wear your logos, I'll promote you, um, donate, you know, barter and trade. Hey, we got a lot of options out there, you know. Points, guess what, I can use your points because I'm going to be traveling a lot. So if you can give me some points, airline points, hotel points, guess what? Every little bit counts. I'm not selfish, I'm not greedy. I just want to go explore the realm of the industry that I've been working in for 12 years and get more of a hands-on, um, you know, perspective so I can look at it from my lens of how I see logistics, innovation, construction, you know, technology and um, transportation. All of those caveats work together. So, and I do an integral piece. I mean, I enjoy what I do. So, to actually get out there and see how everything ties together is awesome. I mean, I always see the end of the, the building get built and all of that process. But getting hands down, going through the field, see, seeing what they do on a different daily basis. And how this affects that, how if they're putting duct work in, when you're trying to put units, HVAC and plumbing all in the same area, how stuff doesn't mesh. I mean, I want to be able to tell other trade school youths, such as I went to trade school when I was late 20s for automotive technology. So, I am a trade school person. I do have college under my belt. I did graduate from high school. I am a hands-on learner, though. So, if I knew what I know now, I would not have went to college in the order, keywords, in the order, order that I went. I would have got out of high school, went to trade school, then... Worked my trade, 
got in with a company or went through the apprenticeship, did my apprenticeship time, five years, school, so 18, 23, get out, been working, got experience, five years experience under your belt, education under your belt. Now you go work for a company that actually offers tuition reimbursement. So you can go learn some more. So now you can go get that degree, taking a class here, a class there, two classes here, two classes there, paid for by, guess who? The company you work for because you get a certain grade, they pay 100%. You don't get too top, top, top notch. Guess what? You pay 75%. I mean, on top of being able, if you can get financial aid or scholarships on top of that. So, and there are a lot of trade programs that all offer scholarships for, you know, they want their people to build up and go up and turn into project managers and superintendents and things like that. Technology is drive is a driving force in all of those. So, I mean, if money is what you want to make, there are good ways to make it. One being trade schools. So, along my, what I call my 2020 tour of the construction, logistics, trade schools, and um, equipment, I mean, I want to go to rental companies. I want to go to uh, OEMs, the distributors. I want to go to the sellers. I want to go to the auctions. I want to go to the buyers. I want to go see what all of this ties in together. I want to go to the job sites to see how they communicate from the field to the office. I want to go to the corporate offices to see exactly how different companies operate. I mean, I work in corporate office now. And we operate in our own unique way. So it's a good opportunity to go venture off and check out how other companies work. I work for a company that hopefully I'm willing, that it'll be willing enough, you know, it's big enough that we can have the, I know we can, we have those uh, sites and um, places that we can, I can go visit to see how they operate and how they ship and how they get product from A to B, where they buy product, what's their buying process, how diverse are their teams, I mean, what is their recruiting process for the future of the mechanical trades, I mean, all construction trades, all trades, period. I mean, going to... Uh, Truck driving school. There's a shortage on truck drivers right now. Truck drivers can be paid at a premium. So, what's the cost? I mean, what are you, I mean, are you willing to donate $20 here, $50 here, $1,000, $5,000? What are we going to do to retain good workforce now? and not continue to lose them to competitors because we're not knowing what they actually need. What are you gonna to do to recruit the future talent so we can continue to develop these buildings and careers and well, debt-free, um, a debt-free generation. I mean, like I said, college is great and all, but why do you need to pay $1,000 for a class to learn uh, what pi over any equation equals? Who's using that? Pretty much all construction tools now give you your readings right then and there. It's a back up, it's a tape measure. If you have to use the tape measure, guess what? The phone's Google is not going to back up when you ask the tape measure. How do I use a tape measure? They're making things a lot difficult. More difficult than they are. But 
Yeah, I mean, if you want to go, I mean, become a doctor, yes, you have to go to college and learn all of those dissections and different functions of chemistry and different arteries and things like that. But if you just want to graduate and go become someone in the business world, your focus is going... Nowadays, everything is learned online and you can watch a video to get some information on this or you can take a class online so if you can learn it on your own and understand it and learn i mean have the same knowledge as somebody that went to a four-year degree school but has no home um on the job training what 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 person would you pick and what person and how would you pay that person would you pay that person less because that person doesn't have a college degree? Something to think about. Most of the people, most of the, some famous people don't have college degrees. You know them, it's too many for me to name, but at the same time, it's a lot of them. Not just, I mean, they're, some are just off talent. Guess what? Talent isn't everything. But it started off with that talent and it blew into a conglomerate for not just one individual for a team LBJ paved the way he learned it's just like the classes they teach in school now don't mean much of anything <coughs> yes we need to know our basic most of the stuff we know learned in elementary growing up yeah that was good but if I want to work on construction sites, I do not need to know the, the Dwight Eisenhower, any all the information about Dwight Eisenhower. Don't need to know that. It's wasting space in my brain. That's something I'm going to learn on a blip, and guess what I learned? Then? Thanks. So wasting all of that education on when people can get hands-on training and on-the-job training. I don't know. Certain fields, yes, there were requirements, but... Why waste the money for a general studies degree that you, I mean, a lot of places are not even requiring degrees anymore. Because the degree is not like it, what it, it doesn't mean what it meant a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, if you didn't have a degree, you didn't, you pretty much, they thought of you as you didn't know shit. You didn't have no education. You were stupid. You didn't know nothing. They didn't want to take that chance. Nowadays, you don't have to learn a degree. You may have a degree. You have too many different avenues. Before, it was just a teacher had to teach you or somebody had to show you how to do it or you had to learn from in a classroom pretty much setting or you had to learn hands-on. So there was two options. You either learn hands-on or somebody taught you. What's the difference in today? You can only learn so much of what somebody teach you, but when you have to put that into real-life experiences and real work, that's a big difference. I would rather the person that perform CPR on somebody one time than the person that just learned how to perform CPR because, oh, I did it. I'm going to want the, they learned it on a video. They learned it in a classroom, but never done it. I'm still going to pick the person that's done it hands on already. That's who I want to do it. If there's no one around, I'm going to take the person that did it. I have no choice in the matter, actually, but do you want the brightest executive that had all the fancy pieces of paperwork and um, little uh, frames? Or do you want the person that's been hands-on on the ground in the trenches that has the following in the back the, the um, experience in the on-the-job training to get it done you tell me I'm pretty much gonna go with the person that has some action behind what they're doing so those are just my thoughts this is gonna be was broken up into more random stuff than I, I meant to think about but I'm going on the 2020 tour
With one stop, I know being Tokyo. Very bustling city. So much construction, so much beautiful architecture. I just want to see it in real life and compare it to some of the major cities I've been to in the United States. So that might be, that's going to be one of the, um, my main goals. So granted, if you want me to sponsor your stuff while I'm at Tokyo at the Olympics, let me know. Make this worldwide. Guess what? I mean, I can't only sponsor so much. So there's going to be classification, of, you know, costs associated with those. But I wrap your brand, I wrap your hat, whatever type of, I'll pass your stuff out. As long as you pay for the um, transportation to get it there, and my transportation to get it there, you know. So, with that being said, I'm going to wrap that one up.